Hello, and welcome to Game Objective. As always, I'm your host, Brad Glasgow. A couple of weeks ago, Valve sent out a notice to developers of lewd games, letting them know that they were in violation of Steam's rules and guidelines for pornographic content, and that they would be removed from the store. As you would expect, this caused some outrage among gamers, and they protested this move on social media, as well as a petition on Change.org. Two days later, Valve sent out a new letter to those developers, quote, apologizing for the confusion, saying to disregard their previous email about the violation, and that they would re-review matters and follow up. Today, in the Steam blog, Valve updated the community on their decision. Valve's Eric Johnson noted that the company has been struggling with its decision on the matter and writes, quote, People have falsely assumed these decisions are heavily affected by our payment processors or outside interest groups. Nope, it's just us grappling with a really hard problem. Quote, the challenge is that this problem is not simply about whether or not the Steam store should contain games with adult or violent content. Instead, it's about whether the store contains games within an entire range of controversial topics. Politics, sexuality, racism, gender, violence, identity, and so on. In addition, there are controversial topics that are particular to games, like what even constitutes a game, or what level of quality is appropriate before something can be released. He goes on to state that Valve is not a homogenous company and that there is plenty of disagreement about this matter. But he writes, quote, We've decided that the right approach is to allow everything onto the Steam store, except for things that we decide are illegal or straight up trolling. Now, the details of this announcement are not yet fully known. Valve is a notoriously closed off company and we're not yet sure if this means that they're going to go ahead and allow outright por pornography games or what. They currently allow some games that are at least somewhat pornographic, like an illusion virtual reality game, for example. There's obviously some subjectivity in what they're going to allow, and it's unknown what they'll consider, quote, straight up trolling, which is what they recently used to justify the removal of the highly controversial active shooter where you shoot up a school. We'll just have to wait and see how this actually plays out in reality. Game creators like the developer of Honey Pop were quick to praise the decision by Valve. But more interesting is that the game journalists working for the major sites were nearly unanimous in their condemnation. Ben Kuchera of Polygon quickly put up an op-ed just absolutely filled with salt, decrying Valve's decision as a money play. Quote, it's an open declaration of for-profit sociopathy. You can't give something a home, take a percentage of its sales, and say that the product doesn't reflect your beliefs. Your beliefs are being reflected perfectly in that situation, in fact. This was probably a simple decision for Valve, and if you're upset, just remember that your anger isn't the anger that Valve cares about. There were also quick op-eds on Mashable, Rock Paper Shotgun, Paste, and GamesIndustry.biz, and I'm sure there are a few more that are out just before I uh, uploaded this video, all of them complaining of Valve's decision. From Vice's Waypoint, we had Austin Walker and Patrick Klepek expressing their dismay on Twitter, and it was the same for Kotaku's Luke Plunkett, Heather Alexandra, and Nathan Grayson, who liked one of his followers' statements that, quote, this is what happens when you're allowed to center your white maleness institutionally. About the only major gaming site or journalist I found agreeing with Valve's decision was Jeff Grubb from VentureBeat. Now, for my brief take on the matter. Those of you who have been with me for some time know that I'm constantly denouncing the gaming press for all of them being clones of one another. They all think exactly alike. They want games that they consider problematic to be removed from Steam because they conflict with their intersectional ideology and because these people are all authoritarians who are they're not only anti-consumer but they're outright anti-capitalist. This was not only a good decision by Valve, it was the only decision that they could make. Valve should not be in the business of going through the content of every game to decide on whether or not we should be able to play it. Just put the games up on the store, label them correctly, give us the proper tools to filter out games that we don't want, and let us consumers decide. And that sounds like exactly what Valve is planning on doing. When Ben Kuchera says, you can't give something a home, take a percentage of its sales, and say that the product doesn't reflect your beliefs, you know that he's full of crap, because you know that he doesn't believe in every product and service that is advertised on Polygon. 
Now, there is some legitimate concern about asset flipping games on Steam and all the junk that's found on Steam. Some people don't want to wade through all that shovelware when they're browsing games. Unfortunately, the alternative that, to that is having people decide what game is or isn't right for you. Personally, that's something I know I don't want. But the game journalists aren't really making arguments about shovelware and asset flipping non-games. They are in this for ideological reasons. This issue illustrates perfectly this huge, gaping divide between game journalism and gamers, and it further demonstrates why these people are becoming increasingly irrelevant. We have gamers on one side who want games of all kinds to choose from, and on the other side we have game journalists who want you to only buy games they approve of politically. It doesn't take a genius to figure out who's going to win this battle. That's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you find any value in my content, please consider donating to my Patreon or PayPal. You can find links in the description below. For Game Objective, this has been Brad Glasgow. Thanks for watching.